Hey, welcome back to Postal Barbecue. I'm Jay Boone Postal, and today at The Grill, I'm gonna show you how to make the most amazing honey jalapeno lime wings that are gonna absolutely blow you away. They're so delicious. Other than that, let's get into the cook. As I said, welcome back to Pulse Barbecue. I appreciate you being here. Today I've been craving wings all morning and so I decided to make a honey jalapeno lime uh, chicken wing that's gonna be absolutely delicious. There's not much to do. Uh, we have our lime, our jalapeno, some honey, some sticks of butter, and of course the star of the show are chicken wings. And so I'm gonna be cooking these today on the slow and sear kettle grill, a little bit hotter than I might normally do wings, but this is to crisp up the outside a little bit more so that the sauce has something a little bit more to stick to at the end. And so these are going to be so good. Uh, game day, tailgating, party food, whatever you want to do with them. Uh, this is going to be a winning combination for you for sure. To get started, I have a little bit of uh, baking powder. And so this is what's going to help make those wings a bit more crispy. The baking powder is going to help dry out the skin a little bit. And this is going to help make for that crispy wing. And so I have about a tablespoon of baking powder here. You know, I've done this before uh, many times using some uh, flour mixture in this as well. So it's a, a baking powder flour mixture, and that's a really great option as well. They're super, super crispy that way. Just get that on there. Just mix those around. All right, guys, just take a look at that. You can see that the baking powder is sort of grabbing onto that wing, and this is gonna make it really crispy. All right, so to season the wings today, I'm gonna be using my chicken rub. This is a great uh, balanced rub for chicken wings, uh, for chicken in general, really. It's got the sweet, the savory, a little bit of tang to it, which is gonna go nicely with that lime. And so uh, just use whatever you prefer. This is what I prefer by far. Uh, it's so good. Just get that on there, and then just gonna mix it around. There we go. This is exactly what you're looking for. You know, just a nice battered uh, coated wing with that seasoning. So with our wings all prepared, I'm gonna get this Lone Sear kettle set up for cooking around 350 degrees, and then I'm gonna get these wings onto the grill. To set up the grill for today's cook, I filled up the Sloan Sear basket about three quarters of the way full uh, and I got those coals uh, mostly lit. Then I closed the lid and let that temperature come up to around 350 degrees. All right, for this cook today, I'm gonna to be putting the wings on the opposite side of the Sloan Sear, so they're just cooking indirect. Uh, and again, at that 350, I'm even gonna push it up to you know, 375 if it wants to climb that high. It's not a big deal. And so let's get these onto the grill. There we go. And so I am leaving a little bit of space on the edge there uh, because I'm gonna be making our sauce and that's where I'm gonna put it. And so the last thing I'm gonna do before I get these wings actually cooking is I'm gonna add in a little bit of cherry wood uh, just directly over those coals. I'm gonna get this lid quickly closed. And the wings today are gonna take probably about 45 minutes to, to an hour. Uh, and so I'm gonna come back about the 30 minute mark to prepare the sauce and get it onto the grill so that uh, the sauce and the wings are all done at the same time. All right, I'm 30 minutes into this cook and I wanna show you what these wings look like. They should be uh, getting a little bit crispy already uh, and they may be getting close to being uh, technically done at 165, uh, but we're gonna push it beyond that. So just take a look at these. Oh my, look at that. You can see that that skin is crisping up so well. Uh, these are gonna be so good. And so I'm just gonna quickly close this back up uh, while we prepare the sauce that we're gonna toss them in at the end. And so to get started with that, first of all, we're gonna start with uh, a stick of butter, uh, maybe about three quarters of a stick of butter actually. Stick that there. And I'm just gonna toss this into uh, my cast iron skillet. Just like that. And then I have uh, two jalapenos. Just gonna slice this up uh, quite finely. Just gonna take this and gonna scoop out the core. And do the same to the other one. Then I'm gonna take my jalapeno, I'm gonna dice it uh, fairly fine. All right, there we go, we'll get that into our cast iron. 
And then I'm gonna add in one lime, keep it a little squished first. Slice it down the middle and then just get that right into our dish. Our second one. All right, then the last thing I'm gonna add in is some honey, and this is just gonna help sweeten up. So we got that sweet, the sour, the spice, and the savory, and so this is gonna be a great combination. There we go. So when you're adding the honey and you're adding all these ingredients, just add it to your flavor. And then if you want a little more spice, you can add some cayenne pepper just to kick it up a little bit uh, if your jalapenos aren't too spicy. So I'm gonna uh, just taste it later on once everything's all melted and sort of fused together to see if I need to add that spice. And so let's get this onto the grill. Just gonna place it right off to the side there. And so I'm gonna let that butter melt down for about five to 10 minutes, as well as the jalapenos. Just let them cook down a little bit in that sauce as well uh, before I give it a taste to see if it needs a little bit more spice. And so I'll, I'll bring you back uh, when we get closer to that sauce being done. All right, I think it's been enough time for our sauce. So let's take a look at it. We can see it's nice and bubbly. That's great. Let's give it a stir. Okay, I'm gonna give a, a quick taste test just to see what it might be missing. Mmm, that smells so good. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, you can taste that honey and that jalapeno really well, as well as that lime. It's really, really well balanced, actually. And so I do want a little bit more spice, so I'm gonna just uh, put in, you know, maybe about a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. We'll just mix that in. Oh, that nails it. Oh, that's so good. Okay, so let's take a look at our wings. Uh, they should be done. Got 189. Yeah, so these wings have hit 185. I usually like to bring mine to 185 to 195. So anywhere in between there. And guys, they look absolutely delicious. Just take a look at that. Let's get that sauce off and then toss these wings. Ooh, careful, that's hot. All right, let me show you why we put that baking powder on. You can see it's just more crispy. Listen to that. And with a good wing, this is exactly what you want to hear. And so let's get this sauce over top of these wings and toss them. It's gonna be so good. Just gonna pour some of this over top. There we go. Oh, that aroma. These are gonna be so good. Okay, so I'm gonna get these out of the bowl onto the cutting board and then we'll get ready for the taste test. Guys, honestly, I don't know the last time I was this excited to taste these wings. Uh, they just look absolutely perfect to me, uh, from the color to the texture with the jalapeno on there, and they're just glistening from that honey. They look and smell so good. And so let's go for a taste test and see how they are. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, frick, that's amazing. Yup. <laughs> Those are incredible. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You know, you get this sweetness, you get the spice, you get the smoke, you get the salt. These are perfect. You know, if I'm looking for a wing that fits all the needs that I'm looking for, this might be it. These are so good. And best of all, they didn't take any more time than any other wing. They're just delicious. Mmm. Oh my goodness.
You guys know that I love wings. There's a number of different wing recipes on this channel, but these might just be some of the best on the channel so far. Like they're incredible. They have everything that you need in a wing. And I know in a couple minutes, they're gonna be devoured. And so make sure to give this recipe a try. You're gonna love it for sure. And so I'm gonna go in, enjoy these wings and probably not gonna be any leftover whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So that's how you make the most incredible wings that everyone's gonna go crazy for. You're gonna love them for sure, so make sure to give them a try. Until next time, keep that fire lit and get cooking. Hey, welcome back to Pulse Barbecue. I'm Javen Postal, and today at the grill, I'm gonna be cooking up a delicious whole picanha using the Sloan Sear Kettle Grill, and this thing is absolutely delicious. If you've never tried it before, you need to add it to your list. Other than that, let's get into the cook. As I said, welcome back to Pulse of Barbecue. I appreciate you being here. Today at the grill, I'm gonna be cooking up this delicious two, two and a half pound picanha or top sirloin cap, or sometimes it's even called uh, culotte. And this is a cut of beef that's very popular in Brazil. And over the years, it's become even more popular in North America uh, because it is absolutely delicious. You know, for me and my family, this is one of our go-to cuts of beef when it comes to steaks. Uh, Cause in my grocery store, uh, for the longest time, I could not find it then. And uh, all of a sudden I realized that top sirloin cap was the same as picanha and it was a game changer from there. Often in my grocery store, you see them cut into steaks already, but when you can access the full roast like this, it's a lot of fun to cook and will even feed a full family on a budget. And so to get started with this, there's not much I'm actually gonna do. I have some rosemary infused olive oil. If you don't have that, go ahead and just use some regular olive oil and then my barbecue rub. And today I'm gonna be using my uh, Pulse Barbecue Mad Cow Rub, and this is gonna complement the picanha so well. It's got the salt and the pepper and a little bit of spices in there that's just gonna go perfectly for this cut. And so what I'm gonna do to get started with is I'm gonna uh, take my rosemary infused olive oil. I'm just gonna uh, put it on the outside. And this is gonna be a little bit of a binder so I can get more of that barbecue rub to stick to the outside. There we go. And you know, as I mentioned earlier, this cut is often uh, cut into steaks. And if you are gonna do that, uh, I always recommend cutting with the grain uh, so that you're cooking with the grain and then cutting against the grain later on. And you'll notice that there's these three veins on the picanha, and this is sort of a guide. Uh, anything before the third vein is not really picanha, but still delicious. And everything after is picanha and tender and beefy and absolutely wonderful. And I always start on that third vein, cutting about an inch and a half thick uh, uh, steaks before I put it onto the grill for reverse sear or front sear. But like I said, today I'm going to be cooking this whole uh, because it's a lot of fun. It's actually similar to cook like a tri-tip. With that olive oil binder on, let's go ahead and put that mad cow on. And for this cut today, I'm going to be cooking it fat cap up. If you want to cook it fat cap down, go for it. It's all just preference. Press it down, get the edges. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the same to the top section. All right, there we go. Uh, like I said, there's not much to do to prepare this cook. It's super simple to do. And so with it all seasoned and ready to go, let me show you how I set up the Sloan Sear Kettle for today's cook. All right, to set up the kettle today, I filled up the Sloan Sear basket with lump charcoal, and then I got the corner of the basket uh, fully lit before closing the lid and letting our temperature come up to around 250 degrees. 
All right, like I said, the kettle is set up for cooking around 250 degrees today. And the way I'm gonna be cooking the picanha is fairly simple. I'm gonna place it onto the indirect side of the grill and let the meat come up to temperature slowly. And I'm gonna bring it up to about 120 degrees before I mix those coals around, get them roaring hot uh, so that I can put a final sear onto the outside of the picanha. And so let's get it onto the grill opposite the coals. There we go. And then I'm gonna grab uh, my digital thermometer. Today I'm using uh, my meter. I'm gonna place that right into the center of the picanha. And then last, I got a little bit of hardwood that I'm gonna put in, uh, just add a little bit of smoky flavor. Place that directly over those coals. And then I'm gonna close up that lid. And like I said, today I'm cooking around 250 degrees and I'm gonna be bringing the picani up to around 120 degrees internal temperature and the meter uh, thermometer is gonna do an incredible job just monitoring the meat as it rises. And then once it reaches that temperature, I'm gonna mix around the coals, get them roaring hot in preparation for the final sear. And during the searing process, it's gonna increase the temperature another about 10 degrees or so. And so if you want it a little more rare, just do the math about 10 degrees less. Um, if you want it more, cooked to just again do that math because it's going to increase about 10 degrees during the final sear and so we'll come back when it's time to get ready for the sear Okay, this picanha has been cooking for about an hour and 15 minutes now, and the kettle has been rock steady the entire time, around 250 to 260 degrees. Uh, my meter app has just notified me that the internal temperature has reached 120 degrees. And so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna prepare for the final sear. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the grill, I'm gonna mix up the coals and get those roaring hot because that's exactly what we need to get a nice crust and perfect sear on this picanha. So let's take a look first of all. And guys, just look at how incredible that picanha looks. You can see there's a little bit of smoky flavor as well as that fat cap is starting to soften and render a little bit. And so the only thing left to do is get those coals roaring hot and ready for the sear. All right, it's only been a couple minutes and these coals are roaring hot. It's the perfect time to begin to sear the outside of the picanha. And the method I'm gonna be using today is called the cold grate technique, which basically means I'm gonna be searing the outside uh, for about 45 to 60 seconds twice, spinning the grate each time. I'm gonna do that three times then on the last flip. I'm just gonna sort of monitor and sort of make a judgment call on how much time that last flip is gonna take. And so let's go ahead and sear the picanha. I'm gonna do one final spin. And then this last one, I'm just gonna let it go for probably about 20 seconds because the fat cap is getting a little bit dark and I don't want to overcook and sort of give a little bit of a, a burning taste to the, to the fat cap. All right, so with our picanha all seared and ready to go, I'm gonna let it rest for about 10 minutes before we come back and we'll get ready for the taste test. This picanha is all done. I did let it rest for about 10 minutes. And let me tell you, the smell and the aroma that's coming off this is phenomenal. You can really pick up uh, that big beefiness as well as those savory aromas from the fat cap and the barbecue rub. I'm telling you, this is gonna be phenomenal. Uh, I did pull out the meter thermometer when it reached 131 degrees after the rest, and so this is gonna be a perfect medium rare. And so with a picanha, typically uh, you often do see it, like I said earlier, uh, cut into steaks uh, with the grain, and then so you, when you're eating it, you're cutting against the grain. With this one, we wanna cut against the grain. This is gonna make it more tender uh, and just really enhance the overall taste of the picanha. 
So with this one, you'll notice that the grains do run this way. Uh, remember at the beginning, talked about those uh, three veins, and so they were this way here, and that means the grain is running this way. So I'm gonna be slicing it against the grain this way. And so let's cut into this and just see how it is. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's grab this guy right here. And just look at that. It's a perfect medium rare. It's absolutely dripping with juices. There's juices just running all over the cutting board. Okay, I need to go for a taste test. So I'm gonna cut this guy right here. Here we go. And with Pecani, you do want to keep that fat cap on because there's a ton of extra flavor with it. So you want to try and get uh, a little bit with every single bite, just like what I've done here. And so let's go for the taste test. Mmm. 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 -hmm. That's phenomenal. Holy man. I can go for another taste. Okay, I did actually make up a little bit of horseradish mayo, so I'm gonna dip that in there as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a reason why Pecania is so freaking good. You know, every single time I make a Pecania, no matter if it's the steaks or the roast or even smoked like a brisket, it turns out absolutely wonderful. I'm just gonna show you the inside of this. Move that. And look at how perfect this is. It is juicy. It's a perfect medium rare. And you know, if you cook it this way, you can't go wrong. You know, you smoke it, you cook it uh, to 130 degrees, and then you slice it against the grain, and it's gonna be absolutely amazing every time. And similar to a tri-tip, you know, it does have some uh, sections on the corners that are a little bit less thick, which means they're going to be a little bit more cooked. And so it really appeals to so many different people. Um, if they like it more well done, medium rare, or even rare, you can sort of accommodate uh, with a cut like this. And so make sure to give it a try. Uh, this is one of the best cuts of, of beef, that, in my opinion, and I know you're going to love it for sure. So I'm going to go ahead, have some more of this, but I hope you give it a try because I know you're going to love it. Mm. That's incredible. So that's how you make that incredible whole picanha on the charcoal grill. You're going to love it for sure. So I hope you give it a try. So until next time, keep that fire lit and get cooking.